G'day guys, it's Nick Monk here again. I'm uh, presenting another critique. I'm presenting this one uh, with my kids up and about, so hopefully they won't make too much noise. And I'll try not to creak on my chair as much as I did in the last one. It needs a bit of uh, WD-40, I think. Okay. Um, this photograph that we have here has been provided by James Davidson and um, I'd like to thank James for putting his image out there uh, for me to have a, um, a critique at. James is a, a, a photographer and a bushwalker uh, based in southern Tasmania uh, and um, I must say um, he's doing a great job with his photography. He's really uh, coming along, something I've noticed uh, in the last um, year or so. Um, his compositions have become um, uh, a more structured, I guess, and, and, and he really is, um, really is uh, improving at a great rate. Uh, one thing James also really likes to do is, is um, some quite serious bushwalking. Uh, so he gets into some of the places that um, others um, may struggle to get into. And this photograph here is a, probably a case in point. Um, it's a photograph taken at Lake Sydney. Lake Sydney is located in the Southwest National Park um, and it's located off the track that leads from Farmhouse Creek that goes all the way to Federation Peak. Now you turn off the track after a number of kilometres and head uphill to Lake Sydney. The interesting thing about Lake Sydney is it is in limestone cast country uh, and it has a sinkhole at the end of it. Now I haven't been to Lake Sydney, um, it's very high on my list and James's photos are certainly helping to encourage me to go and explore it for myself. Um, it's, uh, it has a, a sinkhole uh, at one end that the water from the lake actually drains into. Uh, quite a, a very interesting area. In fact, another photograph I've seen of James's from this area really illustrates um, the holes in the ground at the sinkhole. Uh, I believe in winter, generally the sinkhole is full um, of water. And so the best time to visit, if you want to see the phenomenon is uh, usually periods of low rainfall, particularly summer, and of course, being the southwest, it's a very um, the, the weather's very changeable and, and and often terrible at certain times of the year. So it's the sort of place that I'll be picking my weather very carefully before I visit. Okay, now I'll talk about the composition and the light, and and perhaps um, some post processing ideas. I've, I'm hoping this uh, critique won't uh, take as long as the last one, and I'll try and stay a bit more focused if I can. Uh, Composition-wise, uh, this is outstanding. I think it's beautiful. Um, it's the sort of composition I probably would have um, immediately have seen myself being in the area. The little stream here that just cuts through, cuts through the ground just leads your eye absolutely beautifully uh, through to the, the obviously the edge of the sinkhole and your eyes just keep going through the pandani, through the forest and up to these beautiful mountains that have the um, uh, first rays of the sun I think, I think it's sunrise, um, showing on there, it may be sunset, I could be I'm not 100% sure, I don't know which way this is facing. Uh, but a leading line in landscape photography is a compositional uh, uh, tool that's very, very often used and very effective. And this is a classic example of a leading line and just the way it snakes through is just beautiful, really, really lovely. I also like the um, the framing here with the uh, the tree, uh, sorry, the the mountains in the background, and and the way that they 
come down in a bit of a U shape and meet that leading line and it just sort of yeah it just it just works really well it's there's I don't think compositionally there's anything I could really fault with this uh, perhaps perhaps maybe I would have left a little more room at the the top here maybe just a bit uh, now James has quite deliberately cropped this at a 4x5 ratio um, it's exactly on 4x5 I checked it earlier um, now his uh, digital SLR like most digital SLRs um, capture in a 2x3 format so he's chosen to crop it uh, with this 4x5 format which is a classic format that you see um, uh, particularly uh, for, from large format film cameras of the past um, such as used by uh, uh, Peter Dombrovskis and uh, Chris Bell and Rob Blakers. Uh, it's a really, um, a really beautiful format that I prefer to use myself. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, if I'd like to get a bit more room at the top. Maybe I would sacrifice just the bottom sliver, just to move it up a bit. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It, it certainly doesn't really detract from the image uh, that much at all. It's um, it's it's quite um, quite um, beautiful as it is. In the mid ground, we have um, this section of, of trees and shrubs, and a bit of a rising mist here, which uh, probably points more to sunrise. I, I guess you, you often get that at, at, at sunrise. Um, I'll just zoom in here a bit. You can see the type of vegetation we're talking about. Uh, the pandanis here, and the um, and the the forest behind. Uh, looks like we have some skeletons of some uh, king billy pines or pencil pines uh, here that may have been from a previous fire uh, situation. Uh, interestingly, the brownness of the vegetation here is a little startling. Uh, I did talk to James about it and I don't believe it's from fire. I believe it's probably from last year's potentially, I, I, I don't know for sure, but potentially from last year's major flood events and the amount of water that would have been here. And I suspect there would have been some significant uh, water right up to the edges um, of this area here, uh, which probably, uh, well, which has possibly caused some dramas for plants that aren't used to being waterlogged all that often. Uh, I don't know for sure, but um, these browns are clearly natural um, and um, I'm not quite sure what's caused that phenomenon. Uh, if we go down the, the bottom here, get there eventually. Really doesn't like recording and doing this at the same time on my computer. Now I've gone too far. Thank you, computer, for being a prat. Okay, this is the base here. I just wanted to draw attention to the incredible amount of detail that's in this photograph. Now, this is taken on a Nikon D810, uh, which is a 36 megapixel um, camera. Uh, and so there's a great amount of detail from the resolution. And you can see, really, it's just, just beautiful, the amount here. And I love, uh, you can see the rocks in here, and uh, this would make a great large print where you, you can get up close and see some of these beautiful details. Okay, um, James also mentioned that uh, he took this using um, two graduated neutral density filters, uh, using uh, a, a soft two-stop filter and a hard two-stop filter uh, to balance out the light. Um, up here. Uh, I use graduated filters. Um, they're a common tool to use and I think he's used them very effectively here to be honest. Uh, it looks, um, looks like he's, he's balanced it out beautifully. The camera itself has got a very wide dynamic range and so 
um, to, to have to use four stops worth of filters to balance out. It just shows how dark it would have been in here compared to the brightness at the top and James has done a really good uh, job of balancing that. Now as far as post-processing is concerned, which I'll get onto now, um, we'll have a look at the histogram and we can see here that the histogram is very filled out, very filled out. Uh, the one thing I am noticing, there are a lot of tones here in this section, uh, but there's nothing much that goes down closer to black. And um, if I was post-processing -process this, I'd, I'd probably bring some of the tones back a bit towards that, that blackness, just to give it a bit more contrast. Um, there is nice contrast in here, but I think it could do with a dose of just bringing those back a bit, making it um, um, a little more contrasty. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly bring up a curves dialog here and I'll just bring that down a smidge, bring this up. It's very similar to what I did in, in Cameron's photo before. Um, Maybe just a bit like that. Okay, and we'll do a before and after here. And after. Now, that's worked really well, I think, in here. Um, probably a little dark here, which was dark to begin with, probably from the graduated filters. Maybe a little dark in here. So what I'll do is I'll grab a brush, set to black. Uh, I'll put my opacity just down a little. I'll just paint back a little bit just in here. Just through here, maybe. A little bit more in here. Let's just pull it back a bit, a little bit more. There. Okay. Daughter's just interrupting there. Just a second, and I'll pause. Okay, back again. Uh, so I've added that contrast here um, to the, the foreground and, and a little bit into the midground here. Um, I'm just going to add a very small amount of contrast um, specifically to the lit areas of the hill. Um, I'll just again bring up a curves, just bring it down a bit here down you know, a significant amount there and just pull that up like that. Um, I'm just going to control I to inverse that and then I'm going to use a white brush and just paint, set it hundred percent and just paint that contrast in. It's not a, making a massive amount of difference. Now if I was doing this on my own work and had more time I would spend more time to be very careful and exact and I'd get in there and make sure I wasn't creating any editing marks. I am unfortunately creating an editing mark on particularly on that dark rim but um, I would be far more careful otherwise but just for the purpose of the video nice and quick Okay, and I'll just turn that on and off. You can just see, ignore the, the lines, you can just see it's just added a little bit of contrast in there. And I'd probably also, just to finish up, uh, just slight, slight increase in saturation, which I'll only do for the hill. Hills in the background, inverse it again, and then I'd paint paint that in.
Okay, back again, I had to end the video because I'm using a free program and it only goes for 15 minutes. So I'm back and I had to finish the video off. Uh, at the time I was painting in some, um, uh, just this saturation mask on the um, light on the hill. Now, again, personally, I don't, as I explained in Cameron's video, I, I, I don't normally use just a hue saturation layer for my own work. I do have a video that I'll share soon um, that shows my own work and how I do it. Um, but most people would only um, be using uh, the basic tool. Most people that would be interested in what I'm doing with this critique uh, would only be using the more basic tools probably at this stage in, in Photoshop. So I thought I would uh, just stick to those basics rather than overcomplicate things. Okay, so I've painted that in there. Um, off, on, off, on. It's only a little bit of saturation that's extra, not a lot. Um, this is a very natural looking image and we certainly don't want to um, uh, do anything to it that, that, that draws that natural look away. So. Um, too much saturation uh, would probably make it look a little surreal and that's the last thing I want to do. Um, that's basically all I would do post-processing this. I might do a little work in the mid-tones here, perhaps. Um, I'm not a lot, but perhaps. Um, I would try probably to just do a little bit of work here. It's, it, it's a bit dark where this, these trees are here, and I think we could probably get that down to a, uh, a bit of a lighter tone uh, with some careful, very careful and, and quite uh, close in uh, work. Uh, I assume this is a, uh, probably from um, James's use of uh, the uh, neutral density filters that uh, these leaves here are just that little bit darker than um, than the area below it just looks a, a little bit out so um, I'd maybe do a bit of work there but not too much um, James also mentioned that he, th he thought from memory that he was using a polarising filter as well as the um, as well as the graduated neutral density filters now um, I'm not sure that he did or not um, but I would suggest using one and trying to get a little of this reflection out, just a little bit more now. From experience with polarisers, it may well be that this is with a polariser and that's all you could get. Um, it, it can be quite, um, they can be quite fickle depending on the angle of the light in the sky and the angle that you've got your polariser pointed at a subject. Uh, but um, I absolutely love this detail here of these rocks, just beautiful. And if we could just see a little bit more, they're there and they'll show up in a large print. Uh, but we do lose it as we get a bit further into the uh, curve here. And if there was something that a polarizer might be able to do to help that, uh, just we don't want to cut the reflection completely because that would look unnatural and it would also lose the impact of that curve. Uh, and we don't want to do that. But if we could just get just a little bit more detail out of those rocks, um, I think for certainly for a large print, um, it would be worthwhile. And, and particularly in this area here. I don't know if there's something that can be done or not, um, but um, uh, there's a chance that we could. So that's just a, a, another minor improvement that... I, I would uh, suggest um, just, you can see the rocks here, they're just right here, they're really beautiful. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a gorgeous little trickle of water there, it really is. Um, okay, other than that, um, you know, I think, I think this is a, a reasonable, a reasonable um, outcome. The original photograph looked and does look wonderful. Um, it's a matter of taste. Uh, it's a matter of my taste. It's not necessarily what everyone would do, and some people 
would no doubt prefer um, the way James has processed it. So uh, take those comments um, on board with a you know a grain of salt. But I, I did feel particularly in here we just needed to bring the darks down just a little bit and give it that little bit more pop uh, in this area. Uh, if we just turn off all the layers. Okay, so this is the original um, photograph of James, and we'll turn on the three adjustment layers, and uh, this is the um, the improvements that I think would, would just enhance the photo just that little bit more. Uh, but I, um, I'd like to congratulate James on a terrific photograph. Um, it's it's. Um, really really pleasing to look at and thank you so much for allowing me to critique it thanks everyone please post any comments you have any questions um, wherever i share it and um, i'll endeavor to answer those and if anyone else has a photograph they'd like critiqued then please uh, send it my way and i'll uh, do my best it doesn't have to be your best photograph i'm sure james is very proud of this um, if it's one that you're just not sure about or, or you think might help others by me talking about um, you know, your, your photograph, then, then please send it, send it my way and, um, and I, can, I can talk about that further. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.